everyone, Helen here. How are you doing? I hope you're okay. Uh, this week's podcast, oh, well, it's definitely going to have some crafting in it, but uh, I'm going to take you off on a little holiday that I just had with my mum. And it did involve a lot of crafting and a lovely cosy cottage. So I do hope you're going to enjoy that. Uh, we did get out and about a bit as well, so that, that's what I'm going to show you first of all. I'm going to show you where we were staying and a walk I went on and just some visits that we made. Neither of us have a car, so um, I, I've never learnt to drive and my mum doesn't have a car anymore. So we, we were reliant on public transport to get about, but we they had chosen the place to stay in that we knew we could get a bus to places from it. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we did go on a couple of lovely visits as well. So, yeah, come along, come along with me and join my mum on our little holiday. So we'd booked a cottage in the village of Acom in Northumberland, not far from the town of Hexham. Acom sits above the Tyne Valley and its name comes from the Anglo-Saxon Acom, which means where the oak trees are. The main street where we were staying is a conservation area with lots of old stone cottages dating from the 18th and 19th centuries. The Pant is the place where the ancient village green used to be. It's a central place that provides water for both animals and humans uh, to quench their thirst, although not no longer today. <laughs> um, this is all that remains of the old village green. We were staying in Atacum Cottage, one of a number of pretty stone cottages in the main street. It was beautifully appointed, lovely and cosy and spotlessly clean. Would you like to have a little tour around? <laughs> Come on then and have a look. On our first morning, we went for a little walk up the road and and then I went off on a little walk by myself using some instructions I'd found in the cottage. I felt quite brave doing this because I don't normally go off on my own in an unfamiliar area, mainly because I'm just really good at getting lost. However, I was really glad that I went on on this walk and I thoroughly enjoyed it.
The nearest town to Acom, uh, Hexham, was just a 10 minute bus ride away. And that's where we went on the second day of our holiday. Hexham was of great strategic importance in the past, as well as being a place of religious significance, with its priory and later abbey at the centre of the town. Do you remember me telling you about the Scottish leader, William Wallace, when we were on our Scottish Borders campervan trip? He attacked Hexham in 1297 and burnt the town down. Hexham suffered a lot from the border wars with Scots over the years. And there were other conflicts too, such as the Battle of Hexham in 1464 during the Wars of the Roses. Hexham's Moot Hall stands on the far side of the marketplace from the Abbey, and it's quite an imposing medieval tower. It was heavily fortified with three sets of doors, overhanging parapets and murder holes, so a very good defensive building. The marketplace was also the location of the Hexham Riot in 1761, when a crowd protesting about changes in how locals were called up to serve with the militia was fired upon by troops from the North Yorkshire militia. 51 protesters were killed and the militia got the name the Hexham Butchers. After refreshments in the refectory cafe next to the abbey, we went into the abbey itself. Apart from enjoying the grandeur of the buildings, there was also an excellent exhibition taking place all about ancient rock carvings that are found scattered all around our region and celebrating the research of a man called Stan Beckinsall. And I particularly love this quote from his work. Rock art intrigues not only by its presence, but also by its provocation. You do not and cannot know everything, it seems to say, but gently prods us to go on with the quest for knowledge. I thought about that for quite a while afterwards, as we quietly absorbed the awe and wonder inspired by the Abbey. We had a nice lunch of celeriac soup in the cafe at the Queen's Hall, which is just across the road from the Abbey. And then we investigated some of the interesting history of Hexham by using a short self-guided walk called a medieval meander. In the marketplace, we took a look at the medieval market hall called the Shambles. Shambles is actually a medieval word meaning a place where meat is butchered and sold. We then walked along a narrow alley to see the only evidence left of the medieval chapel, St Mary's. And this cobbled street is called St Mary's Chair. Chair is a northern word meaning narrow alley. Apparently there used to be 21 chairs running down to the quayside in nearby Newcastle. We were able to spot evidence of a 300-year-old doorway. This little stone carving was the clue. And as usual, it was also interesting to look 
at the upper parts of the old buildings for a clue to their antiquity. On one of the outer boundaries of the abbey, we saw evidence of the medieval cloisters. This is all that's left of the lavatorium where the canons washed before meals. On the other side of the abbey precinct is the priory gatehouse. At one time there was a room above the archway with a flat roof and it was on here that the canons stood along with some of the angry townspeople to fend off Henry VIII's commissioners when they came to close the priory in 1536. On the next day we decided to go and visit the village of Bellingham, a place that I took you to in last December's campervan trip in fact. So off we went on the bus again for a journey of about 40 minutes, passing through some lovely little Northumbrian villages as well as some very pleasant scenery. Bellingham is one of the places where my mum was evacuated to in the Second World War and I asked her a few questions about what she could remember of her experiences in Bellingham. So what can you remember about the time that you were evacuated to Bellingham? What I can remember is that I went with my mother and my little brother who was then just a little toddler and my mother had gone to do some work there, be a cook, I think. And how old were you? And I must have been, must have been the first place we went to, so I would be a bit less than five, about five years old, I would think. And the other thing I can remember is the grandeur of the place. It was a huge, well, it looked like a mansion to me. It wasn't a mansion, but... Um, and my, my mother always just called it the big house. And were there other I, children there? Oh, there were masses of children there. And, and there didn't seem to be any adults at all. And I, I couldn't understand why why my mother was there. And nobody, all these other children didn't have their mothers. What kind of things did you do while you were there? Well, I can remember playing because outside the house was a a, a huge expanse of grass. Um, which was flat to start with, and then it banked down quite a bit. Uh, I can remember the children rolling down that bank, but the, the, there must have been some soil somewhere because one of the things that sticks very strongly in my mind, there were some boys there, and they made me eat worms because they said they were good for me. Oh. And it was absolutely <laughs> horrible. Oh, I bet and, it was. And I've never forgotten that. And it's really, I, I see a worm and it always takes me back all those years, 80 odd years, can't believe it. After lunch on the old train, we thoroughly enjoyed our visit to the Heritage Centre. I just love these small places that share the heritage of whatever is pertinent to the local area. I was really amused at the display of field drainage pipes. Not the most interesting thing, you might think. But reading the information, I learned how crucial these pipes were to the development of farming the otherwise rather boggy uplands of Northumberland. We spent ages looking at the huge mural that incorporated so many icons, events and significant places in North East England, from stories of border disputes to iconic food and, and invasions and much more. I also love the chatterbox posts. Was that the grass was cut with a scythe? Then was a single horse reaper. The only fertilizer used was farmyard manure, so crops of old grasses were very light. The grass was cut in breaks of half to two acres at a time. And there was so much more to enjoy and not enough time to take everything in before we had to go and get the bus again. So I definitely would like to go back there. So I'm going to finish now with just some of the crafting that Mom, Mom and I did while we were uh, away staying in that lovely little cottage. 
and uh, yeah we did all sorts of well mostly I did knitting but my mom did several different things and um, just one of the things I'm not going to show you this week uh, my mom decided that she would teach me how to tat to do the craft of tatting don't know if you know that if you've ever, ever had a go at it or know what it is but I'm going to show you that next time uh, but otherwise I'll show you everything I'm going to begin with my mom uh, telling you about the projects that she took away with her because she took quite a lot um, <laughs> and then then just a little uh, montage of video that I took of the different things that we were working on while we were away and so I'm not going to pop in again at the end to say goodbye so I'm going to say goodbye now I'm going to wish you a, a lovely week nice busy week take great care of yourself and I will be back again to see you again very soon okay then bye Okay, then right. you show me projects you brought. Main project is tatting. Okay. Because I'm going to teach Helen how to tat as well. Second one, it's been lying around in the house for a long, long time in my work room, craft room. Hardanga coasters. Next is some sashiko quilting. Okay. And then I have some cross stitch, which is the um, um, the new Tyne Bridge. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's half of it. Yeah. And then I have got my sewing case. <laughs> It's looking a bit grubby, I have to say, <laughs> which is full of every needle I would ever need for anything. Lovely. <laughs>